It only happens one time a year. You know what it's all about. There's chimneys, there's stockings, there's presents, there's joy for all. It's the most wonderful time of year. Wait, you think we're talking Christmas? No, we're talking Folk Fest. Hey everyone, my name is Matt Swirk. You know, I'm a local real estate expert right here in the state of Massachusetts with the Legacy Star Team powered by Keller Williams Realty. Now, if this is the first time you come to our channel, you're wondering, what's this all about? Well, we talk everything about Massachusetts, whether it's eating or sleeping or drinking, playing, all kinds of activities, but especially the Lowell Folk Fest. So you have plenty of questions. We have plenty of answers. Reach out to us. We'll get back to you as quick as possible. And remember, Hit that little subscribe button, click the little bell. That way, every time we make a new video, you're gonna get notified. We appreciate thumbs up for support. And you always have to remember, when it comes to Massachusetts, we've always got your back. All right, so if, you, if you've seen our channel in the past or you uh, have gone through the library, you know we did a vlog of Lowell. Uh, Lowell is a large city on the north, uh, the north side of Boston. Uh, has had an amazing transformation over the years. Um, I asked you to go back and check out that um, that walkthrough through the area. Tyler and I had so much fun that day. Uh, we, we have so much fun every time we make videos. So it's, and it's an honor to be able to have people check us out and, and reach out and, and ask all the uh, questions to us. So this weekend, um, the, the, there's a big thing called the, the Lowell Folk Festival. And this year is the 35th anniversary. Now, uh, of course, being a big anniversary date of, you know, kind of that number, uh, there's going to be a little bit more activities, uh, probably some um, different headliners are coming in. Uh, these guys have absolutely just, you know, you know, crushed the model as far as putting on an amazing event. Uh, and I got to tell you, like, this attracts people, like over 150,000 people come to this thing. It's been spread over three days, starts on Friday night, runs through Sunday. Um, I pulled a lot of data actually from their website just to be very specific. And there's so much, you know, there's no way I can remember all this. So uh, I, had to, I had to do the cheat sheet and, and I, I feel like a news reporter sometimes when I have these papers in front of me. So uh, maybe, I, maybe I was a news reporter in a past life. Anyway, weird subject, different direction. Let's go forward. Um, so this is really, you know, 35 years. This was started back in uh, 1987 and um, you know it was really small at the time and th there's really some major players that pull this th uh, together as far as the the production side of things so we definitely want to give credit to these amazing um, groups that have put this awesome opportunity together every year for a free event so yeah you want to bring some you know extra money if you want to buy some crafts or you have some food or do some experiences uh, but everything is free and there's lots of areas you can go picnic um, it really takes over the the entire let me rephrase that. It's spread across the entire um, city. So there's you know, everywhere you turn, there's gonna be something new to do. Uh, so one of the things, um, oh no, what I was saying as far as um, the, the sponsors of this, so you have the, the Lowell Festival Foundation, the city of Lowell, the Lowell National Historic Park, the National Council for the Traditional Arts, the Greater Lowell Chamber of Commerce, and the Greater Merrimack Valley, uh, Greater Merrimack Valley Convention and Visitors Bureau. Um, so those are the heavy hitters uh, that really uh, pour into this event. Uh, we definitely will give some gratitude to them because this is just something that, you know, I, I gotta be honest, when I first heard about this, like this folk festival, you know, my mind went to a place where I'm like, all right, there's gonna be, uh, you know, I'm labeling certain people that are into like kind of folk music and what they might look like and the instruments they play. And I'm like, I, am I like a folky guy? Like, I don't, I don't think I'm really folky. I like, but I wanna do this. Um, and I gotta tell you, like, there is so many different things there. Like, I, you know, why is it called the Folk Festival? I don't know. Uh, you know, I could do some research on that and I probably should have done that ahead of time. But it, it's just, for me, it's, it's, it's a cultural event. Uh, Lowell is just a huge melting pot and it's really, really cool to have all the different cultures come in, all the different ethnicities and foods that are there. Uh, it's really cool and it's not just folk music. I'm gonna list through some of the people that are playing. There's over 20 uh, performances. I take that back, 20 performers. Right, so there is just like, it starts on Friday night and this thing is jam packed. There's a parade that comes through uh, to kick off the event and it's just, it's something you know phenomenal. So if you ever have the opportunity to come to the Folk Fest, uh, it's always the last weekend of July. Mark it on your calendar. It's an awesome thing to come check out. So there is, as far as food is concerned, you know, there's a lot of ethnic vendors uh, representing over 12 cultures. So that's something that's really cool to be able to experiment and try different foods. Um, as far as the, there's folk craft areas uh, that you can make different things. 
uh, great activities for the family. There is this really cool place. Uh, the, the um, one area is the crafting sound, making and restoring musical instruments. That looks really, really interesting as far as how things are made and, and, and the different noises that they do. Uh, then there's all kinds of different um, food areas uh, that you can have all the different comfort foods from the different communities. Uh, then there's the art in the courtyard where you can actually purchase some of the, the crafts and the art that people have brought there. Uh, so it, it, it's really a fun, fun thing. So I want to just dive in real quick as far as the different types of music, because when I first heard folk, I was like, what is folk? I, I didn't really know. Uh, so, and they do not keep things in a little container. It's like, let's be wide open. Let's share all experiences. Let's bring in all different types of, uh, of um, flavor and, uh, and uh, talent from all over. So it's cool. They have, um, uh, like I referenced, they're having this uh, parade. It starts off, I'm not gonna tra it's a Treme, the Treme Brass Band. These guys are out of New Orleans, so they're a, a brass band. They're going to be kicking it off with the parade, right? Then there's a Western Swing Band that's going to be playing. There is a Bamba uh, Band that's coming. There is a, um, do we talk about the, yeah, so the New Orleans Brass Band. There's a group of Irish performers. There's blues music. I mean, there is so many different flavors. Uh, that you know you you can't if you have an appreciation for the arts like you can't go wrong and even if you don't like the arts come check out all the things it's just gonna be lots of fun you can go there just to eat right you don't have to go there only for the music uh, one of the things I thought that was really really cool and I got wicked excited about uh, a lot of people I don't think we've ever really mentioned this and not there's a big secret but my family background is Polish right so when I was looking through the, um, some of the events I was like this is wicked cool right and the reason being is they're doing all these demos. So they have people coming in to be, uh, teach us how to make different foods. Who's the first one? This woman, so uh, Dottie, um, and so she's uh, she's got a she's got a Polish um, a, a Polish um, Irish back uh, last name. So that's going to be interesting. Um, however, she's going to teach people how to make pierogi. And I was like, oh wow, like I'm always down to make pierogi. Uh, our family makes a lot of Polish food on our own for big events, so, and everyone has their own recipe. Uh, I'm gonna go off on a tangent that you guys know I do all the time. I belong to um, this, I think it's called like My Favorite Polish Recipes. Uh, and, and I gotta tell you, like the, it's so cool to see how everyone has like their like their their staple dish and how there's so many different variations around it. And people are like, I would never put my, I wouldn't put tomatoes in capusta. like what is that? So if you want to know what the Google Kapusta, one of my favorite things. Um, so th there's going to be someone teaching how to make uh, Polish pierogi. There's um, this woman, Eleni, is going to be uh, doing some Greek plates. Uh, there's going to be some Lithuanian uh, veggie and chicken stew uh, presented by this woman, Irene. Um, then there's going to be some Vietnamese spring rolls and sticky rice that's going to be made. Uh, and then there's going to be a demonstration of sharpening knives and, and other tools and uh, using tools in the kitchen. Uh, so that's that's a big one there. Anyone that has knives, I, I think everyone has a knife. Uh, but if you have like decent cooking knives, like you, you know, they, they give you that um, that sharpening tool. Looks like a you know that giant stick. It's like a lightsaber. Uh, and, I, and I always thought like, okay, if the knife gets dull, like sharpen. That thing doesn't sharpen. That keeps it sharp. So I would go check out Dave. He's going to show you how to uh, keep your knives sharp and, and uh, have great utensils. So as far as the, um, this is not geared only towards families, but we wanted to throw out there, you know, there's a family fun area. Uh, you can make arts and crafts with uh, park rangers. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna teach you how to play Lowe's favorite hockey game, which is box hockey. Uh, and there's gonna be all other kinds of games that are gonna be there and all kinds of activities. And some of the sponsors are gonna have, um, they'll have a, a free snack sample. So uh, if you wanna just go there and kind of browse around, try some free samples, you can definitely do that. So there's a family fun area that's open from uh, 12 to five uh, on, on Saturday and Sunday. And then there's also gonna be all kinds of street performers and different things to do. So there's there's gonna be, you, you're looking for some type of action, there's gonna be some type of action. So you're head will be swiveling, looking, checking all the people, checking all the foods, checking all the cool things that are going on, the great things to buy. Uh, so, that, you know, we, we get excited about these things, you know, and we're definitely moving into, uh, not yet, but we have, you know, kind of a festival season. Oh, my battery just uh, showed a message, so I don't know what just happened there. I'm shooting on my camera today. Um, but there is, um, we're going to be moving into uh, festival season where there's all kinds of fairs and festivals and carnivals going on. Uh, the Big E's a big one that, uh, that I absolutely love. Uh, that's uh, out in Western Mass, so we'll probably do a video on that one. Um, so I, I had mentioned before in the, the beginning of this that they have this thing called Crafting Sound, and it's really cool because it, it's, well, I haven't seen it, but I can imagine it, and it, and it seems like a really awesome experience. And, you know, I'm, I'm mechanically inc you know, inclined, and I like to see how things operate. 
Um, I um, I won't tell that story because we, we want to we want to stay in the middle of, of certain uh, viewpoints. Uh, but I was fascinated to learn how some things were made and just how basic things basic things in life are created to 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 do big things. So I'll just leave that there. But anyway, what, I, what gets me excited about this is they talk about you know how to build and restore musical instruments. And all these different types of instruments, some I wouldn't even know how to pronounce them, and I'm not gonna take the time to learn how to Google them. Um, but it's really cool because they, uh, there's gonna be craftspeople that um, will be able to uh, create things out of woodworking, there's gonna be metalsmiths, and just understanding how sound resonates and travels. Uh, and and I, I, I'm a big music fan, so this, uh, this how sound resonates, resonates with me. Yeah, do doom doom Dad joke, I guess. All right, I got plenty of them. Um, so that's that's another really interesting thing that they're going to be having demonstrations to. So I'm interested to check those out. A uh, couple things I wanted to throw out there as far as uh, what to bring. So of course they uh, they recommend bringing you know sunglasses, sunscreen, put a hat on. You know July in New England or in Massachusetts more specifically uh, can get hot. Uh, right here, right now, we are definitely dealing with some humidity and uh, it's not too bad. We haven't hit the dog days of August, although it's right around the corner. So uh, definitely, you know, make sure you're protected. You know, you want to bring a towel or a blanket so that way, um, you know, if there's performances going on, you can kind of sit down on a grassy area uh, or just sit on the grass and, and connect with nature. I don't really, I don't think you need a towel, but if you don't want to get dirty. That's why we have washing machines. All right, so anyway, um, the, you, you can bring low lawn chairs. You know, they, they're just asking, don't bring some giant thing that's gonna obstruct people behind you. Uh, and they, you know, they want you to be courteous. They put there as far as, you know, what to do and what to bring. Like, don't block someone's, you know, view. And, and uh, if you're gonna be blocking people, they're gonna ask you to move. So just be courteous of people around you. Uh, so that's for the day, t well, the, the sunglasses and all that other stuff is for the daytime. At nighttime, you know, sometimes, you know, the, we have a joke here that, you know, if you don't like the weather, just wait five seconds and things can change like that. Uh, last night we had severe thunderstorms came through. Uh, it was super, super humid. Thunderstorms came thing, knocked it down. Uh, you know, the, the, the pressure had changed and then about 15 minutes later, went right back to, you know, being pretty warm and, and having some uh, high humidity. Uh, we cannot really complain about weather here in Massachusetts or New England. Uh, you know, we were talking about this yesterday. There's a lot of things that we don't deal with that other parts of the country have to deal with. Uh, so I feel very blessed to, to be living here. Uh, but they do say bring a sweater, a sweatshirt, a windbreaker for nighttime. Uh, it says you should bring your friends and neighbors, right? So come on over. They say, you know, if you bring a picnic lunch if you want. Uh, there's going to be all kinds of places that you can buy food, but sure, you know, bring your own food if you want to do that. And definitely bring some extra money, you know, so that way, you know, you want to buy souvenirs, uh, CDs, you know, make donations to keep the festival running. You know, this is, I think I said on one of the other videos, I'm a big uh, supporter of local businesses. So you have a lot of people that pour in their blood, sweat, and tears into making things. Um, and sometimes it's not super profitable, right? So, uh, but they, you know, people should get uh, paid what they're worth and I'll, I'll pay a good chunk of money. I don't really know what that would mean, but I would, you know, something that I really like that I, I can appreciate that, that someone put all this energy into, uh, I'm absolutely, you know, would support that. So, uh, and I'm an I'm not an artist. So when I see things, I'm like, how do you, how do you do that? Like, I'm really good at stick figures. Like, you know, you want to have a stick figure competition, I'll, I'll, I'll win every time. A um, couple things I want to identify of what not to bring. No skateboards, no hoverboards, no segways. I don't really know people that have segways that would bring them out in public. Um, you, you don't want to have bicycles there either. It's going to be pretty crowded. Over 150,000 people. Don't bring a bicycle. And no drones. Don't bring drones. Uh, even if you're drone certified and drone pilot, they don't want you having drones there. Uh, that can be very distracting to the performers and... Um, you know, it's just, it can be kind of creepy that you're just hanging out there and you see a drone flying around. You're like, who's watching? Who's watching? Uh, don't be paranoid. The, the government's watching anyway. All right. So, um, and our cell phones and everything has listened to us. So you can't escape it. It is what it is. Uh, embrace technology. Okay. So uh, another thing I thought that was really important that I wanted to identify is that um, the festival is handicap accessible um, for, for a lot of it. So you want to make sure that, um, uh, you, you know, you'll feel comfortable if you're having challenges getting around. Uh, the other thing too is that, you know, very popular is people that bring in their pets, right? So uh, the pest, you know, the pest of the festival. It's not a festival for pests. The, the festival, uh, you can bring pets. Uh, it might not be the best, you know, to have them there, but if you have to bring a dog, um, dogs or, you know, support animals, just make sure that they're licensed and they're leased. And, um, you know, if you have an animal, you wanna make sure you pick up after the animal. And they identify, you know, that there's a lot of people that are very conscientious of this, which is awesome. Make sure that you have um, some type of a container so you can uh, make sure that your animals uh, can be hydrated if you're gonna be out in the sun all day. So uh, those are our little tips 
and highlights of the folk, the Lowell Folk Festival. I, I have a lot of fun when we do these videos. Sometimes we get, come up with some you know really strange concepts. Sometimes we get specific with real estate. We we like to keep it entertaining and and uh, light across the board. But this you know this one's kind of a fun one because it's just talking about this cool event and bringing people together and respecting culture. So I, I absolutely love that. Uh, so we just want to give you a quick uh, a quick taste of what the no pun maybe it was a pun intended but a quick taste of what the folk festival is. If we do a seafood or I mean, if we do a food festival, I'll definitely make sure I to get a taste of that. So anyway, so we wanted to get a little exposure. How's that? We'll get a little exposure to the Lowell Folk Festival. People around here are very very excited for this event. Um, but if you have questions, you know, questions about Massachusetts in general, uh, you know, if you want to know about different places of vacation, about renting, about um, purchasing a home, uh, anything you want to know, just reach out to us. We'll get back to you as quick as we can. Sometimes we get overloaded with requests and we, you know, kind of do the best we can. Uh, we appreciate the support on the channel. Um, we love doing this. Thank you for watching. And you just remember, when it comes to Massachusetts, we've always got your back.